Hey there, let me ask you something. Do you like old ships? Kingdoms? Explosions? Exploration. Have you ever seen a bottle of blue liquor and said... Is that blue liquor? And the label had something you couldn't even read? Well, there are different ways to say it, like Curaçao or Curaçao. I will use the former. As for the other questions, let's see. So, Curaçao is a small island located right here. Um, okay. And what's with the arrow? You might wonder. It just so happens that this piece of land right here, the tiny island of Curaçao, is connected and part of that other piece of land up there, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Back in the old days, the natives used to live all over this region right here, just doing their own things, passing time. That is, until... BAM! It's the age of discovery! And some dudes who like to assemble pieces of wood and float around across the oceans got to this region that we now know as the Caribbean or Caribbean. Seven years later, this guy was the first one from Europe to arrive at the island of Curaçao. As usual, he just disregarded everyone who had lived there since forever and claimed it for Spain. Soon after that, people started drawing the first maps that showed the island, like this one, for example. Which was created by... this guy. Uh, no, not that one. Nope, that one. It is likely that the name Curaçao comes from a similar word that the indigenous people use to refer to themselves. Although, there is a much more interesting and very probably false tale about this. You see, back in the day, it was normal for sailors to have the damn scurvy, a disease that makes your skin say, uh, I think there's something wrong, before it starts disintegrating, bleeding all over and showing you a game over screen. The good thing is that we now know that this is caused by the lack of vitamin C. But, like I said, this has no proof whatsoever, so it's probably just a story people like telling. Like when your dad said that he's got the biggest fish ever in the pond, but threw it back before anyone could see it. But anyway, after the arrival, it took the Spaniards only a few years to find out that the island had no precious metals, it had no relevant salt mines, and the agriculture was terrible. So they figured, well, at least we can turn these people into slaves and ship them somewhere else. And as if that wasn't enough already, because of the lack of resources, they called the newfound place the Useless Island. In 1527, Spain created an outpost in Curaçao and started bringing a bunch of trees, plants and animals. Not all of those were able to prosper, given the local soil and weather, including the sweet oranges that were brought from the old continent. That kind of orange didn't make it, but it would later evolve into the amazing Laraja, which is a rugged orange that tastes like dirty sailor feet. But it has a sweet smelling peel, which many years later would be used by the slaves to create a basic kind of liquor that the still to come Dutch would later enhance, add a blue colorant just because, and export to the rest of the planet. Now, Fast forward to 1634, by this time the Dutch were taking off and dominating the arts, culture and windmill rocket science until they decided to invade Curaçao. So, after ejecting the Spaniards, the Dutch West India Company took control of the island, making it a center for commerce, slave trading and, of course, the good old Caribbean piracy. Fast forward again. And in France, the French were doing French things, until someone said, Hmm, it's too calm here. I think we need a...
And so this Jean tells this Jean, All right, kid, here's the plan. Take these ships, go to Curaçao, explode whoever's left there, and come back here. Now, after completing some side quests, it is finally time for Jean to go to Curaçao. I'll be back to my mademoiselle in no time. No way things can go wrong, I guess. Now, when they were getting close, somewhere around here, some smaller scouting boats went ahead, but it turns out that this place was basically a ship graveyard because of some mischievous reefs. So the scouts got stuck and decided to fire their weapons in order to send a signal. This is not the way! Jean and the others saw that, they thought there was a battle starting and they said that way! Which ended up with several ships of the fleet also getting stuck. After all that bonanza, some sailors died, probably too drunk on bad orange juice to swim. But not Arjun, he then went back to France, where the reports were analyzed, and he was left off the hook, and continued on with his life. So did the people back in Curaçao, which had started to grow, until the British arrived. But the Dutch got it back, and then the British, and then the Dutch again. During this time, some Napoleon guy was making a ruckus in Europe. When that was over, the British and the Dutch decided to sign a treaty. So, this piece of paper, signed in London, gave the Dutch the rights over Curaçao. And that is the start of Curaçao independencies, which was still a colony though. Fast forward again, slavery was finally abolished. But, like in most places, the former slaves were now free, but had no option, no money, only the basic rights, so most just kept working in the same places. In 1914, oil was found nearby, in Venezuela. The Royal Dutch Shell Company was the first one to get there and make some profit. In 1954, some islands of the region, including the A, B, C islands, got grouped together and formed the Netherlands Antilles, a new country still part of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. In 1986, Aruba decides to ditch the rest of the group, but couldn't get out of the kingdom. 24 years later, the Netherlands Antilles are no more. Curaçao itself finally becomes its own country. It is still part of the kingdom, but it has a high level of independence. And that was a very brief summary of this island's history and its curious events. See ya!